Hello, hi. Thank you for watching my next video. Okay, today um, I'm in Leeds. I'm in Herald's. Um, I'm going to discuss Herald's test centre with you now. Okay, Leeds, we have two test centres. We have one in Herald's, uh, which is classed as Leeds test centre. And we also have one in Horsforth. Um, this test centre, the pass rate is... Uh, um, slightly lower than Herald's, uh, sorry, than Horsworth. Um, number of reasons, um, possibly because this one is more sort of found uh, online. So if you were to type Leeds Test Centre, this would come up rather than Horsworth. You've got to be a little bit more specific for Horsworth. Um, which one's easier to pass? They're both about the same. Both of them have their own uh, characteristics. Both of them have their own strong points. Um, you need to understand the difference between both um, to give you an idea of um, this test centre. Um, it's based in a, a very busy residential area. Mostly you test sort of routes, um, driving wise, about 30, 35 minutes. Um, you're doing approximately eight, maybe nine miles most of it is around 20 to 25 miles an hour uh, it's rare that you're going over that speed unless you're going on a dual carriageway um, in terms of roundabouts you'll probably do about four uh, with every sort of test route uh, you'll have lots of um, t-junctions and crossroads to deal with lots of emerging turning right lots of approaching turning right lots of dealing with traffic um, pedestrians and uh, e-scooters and uh, uh, delivery drivers i.e. mopeds um, okay so now uh, today it's Sunday uh, it's a quiet day for this area uh, I'm gonna go over reasonably what to expect on your driving test reasonably the area you'd possibly go in on your driving test um, reasonably how I would expect you to drive to Orbingwell facilitate a pass. Uh, I've been uh, asked a couple of questions. Uh, I've had some people um, message me. Uh, the first one was was language. Um, on your driving test, you will be spoken to in English. The English they speak is clear, um, very similar to mine. They'll speak slower. If you have any problems with the English language, they're quite happy to speak clearer, slower, so you will understand. Um, your your test can only be taken in English or Welsh so uh, if you struggle to understand the English language it's not a problem as long as you're able to understand directions like at the end of the road turn left at the end of the road turn right find a safe place to park the car move off when you're ready if you're able to understand clear instructions like I have spoken to you now you will not struggle. In terms of um, how busy the test centre is, the test centre itself is quite busy. As you can understand, um, we've got a backlog, or they've got a backlog. Um, it's then anyone that can get a test are coming in, whether they're ready or not. So unfortunately, that plays on um, their pass rates. So not to worry. Um, in terms of um, today, where we're going, uh, we'll be going around Leeds, uh, we'll be doing approximately 30 minutes worth of driving, um, approximately 8 to 9 miles today, going over a couple of roundabouts, um, making sure you understand what you should be doing. Uh, I'll have a camera on the inside of the car, so this one that you see now, I'm pointing to, this is on the inside. You'll also see where I'm driving, you'll also see the kind of speed I travel at. Remember, um, if you don't feel ready for a driving test, then simply don't come. Um, there's no point. Why waste your time? If you're going to bring your own car, please make sure that it's in good nick and in good condition. Um, make sure your tyres are in good condition. No cuts, no bulges. Um, make sure you've got the min at least a minimum tread depth. In terms of um, driving examiners, there's male and female. You can't stipulate uh, which one you, you, you get. Uh, are they harsh? No. They do their job. You drive properly and you will pass your driving test. If your driving is, is flawed in any way that they feel that it's 
it's dangerous, you will not pass. Previously, we used to do a driving test and it used to last 40 minutes. We used to go for a walk and come back and more than likely you passed or you failed or whatever. Now, if you fail your driving test, you're brought immediately back. So make sure that you're ready for your driving test. Also, um, um, I'll make you aware that it's public holidays. So public holidays start very soon. Uh, the NGN network, so the Northern Gas Network, they'll be ripping up roads. So they'll be uh, starting their temporary roadworks, temporary traffic lights, their two-way, three-way, four-way controlled traffic lights, sometimes with adjoining traffic, not signal controlled. If you do not understand what that wording means, then I suggest you look that up because that will affect your driving test. Some people will come out on a junction completely unaware that they're traveling in the opposite direction of traffic flow. It's something that you will need to deal with. So in terms of when you go for your driving test, you'll park um, where I'm now possibly. Where you do park doesn't make a difference in terms of the test that you take. Um, there's some old wives tales and some rumors that if you park on one side of the road, you may not get a particular test route. Not really. Um, from where you are, the sat nav will recalibrate you and it will reroute you and send you on the test route that they've designated for you. There's no specific te test route for you, so um, it's a random one that's selected for you. You will have a manoeuvre to do on your driving test, possibly park up on the right, possibly uh, reverse bear park, possibly drive in bear park, possibly emergency stop, uh, possibly parallel park. So it's a manoeuvre that you'll get. In terms of independent driving, you'll have sat nav to use. Sat nav, uh, your instructor or yourself, possibly using TomTom. -tom. I'll just flip this. Uh, yeah, I don't think I can actually do it at the moment. Uh, I've got a TomTom -tom that I use. I also have Google Maps in my car and Android. Um, I tend to use TomTom uh, -tom with my pupils. Uh, I use Android myself when I'm driving. Um, the reason why I use TomTom, -tom, uh, it's the same language spoken um, on their TomTom. -tom. It's the same way it's spoken, so it's very familiar in terms of when you're having your driving test. When you are having your driving test, when you are um, learning with your instructor or with your friend, family, partner, whatever, try and use a TomTom. -tom. There is a big difference in the way a TomTom -tom speaks to you and Google Maps. Google Maps is very particular in terms of what lane it will tell you to hold while you're driving. Unfortunately, TomTom -tom doesn't. TomTom -tom lets you decide. Also, TomTom uh, -tom, um, sometimes gives you the speed limit, sometimes it's incorrect. So it's very important that you understand what the speed limit is of the road that you're on. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move off, we're going to do a test route together and uh, we're going to see how we kind of get on. Once I finish, I'll park outside a test centre. So uh, you're not guaranteed to get the route I'm giving you now. This is just for educational purposes only. It's not here for you to cheat or, or whatever. It's there for you to understand what kind of standard that you'd be expected reasonably to drive at. Uh, I'm no expert. I'm a driving instructor, but I'm no expert in terms of driving. Um, it's important that you realise uh, every time you go onto the road, it's different. You de you're dealing with different people. So whatever you do, don't copy others. Do as you're told, as in what you've learned. Do as what you think your driving instructor taught you or your partner, your friend, your colleague instructed you to do. Thank you for watching. Enjoy. So I'm going to start my routine now. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking around, making sure it's safe. I've signaled, checked my blind spot and I'm moving on. You'll see that I'm check, constantly checking my mirror as I'm driving. So I'm now following the road ahead. I'm now going to take the next road on the left. I check my mirrors, signal left. I'm looking at this dude over here, checking my left door mirror. I'm turning it my road. You'll see that I'm go I've gone slightly over the line. 
I've checked my mirrors, I know it's safe, I've looked ahead and it looks safe to me. I'm now going to turn left at the end of this road, so I've checked my mirrors, going to signal left from around here, I'm going over the line because it's unavoidable. As soon as it's safe I'm going to come back to my side of the road, so I'm looking in my left arm mirror again, gently start coming into my side of the road. Now I'm conscious that I'm quite aware I'm close to the curb, I'm also looking at the black shop on my left hand side because that's my vanishing point if you don't understand what that means uh, look it up motorcyclists will understand what that wording means and that's a black shop that I was looking at when I was coming in so I'm now going to take the next road on the left again And your reason with where I am now. So this is where I originally started the, the video from. Forgive me, this camera's moving. I'm going to change it for a GoPro. At the moment, I'm using my iPhone and it's a little heavy, so it's shaking. So now, as I'm turning right here, I'm going to straighten my car, making sure I'm straight with the road that I'm on, which is what your instructor should have actually taught you when you're turning right. So my car's straight, my wheels are straight. I'm looking at people coming into the road. I'm looking at where the red car is because he should, it's a normal road for them to turn into. I'm also looking at the delivery DPD driver and as I'm turning, I'm looking down into the road that I'm turning into. Now the speed limit on this road is 20. How do I know? The silver car on your right, above there you can see speed limit sign. So my speed's around 18 reasonable speed. I've just seen this young kid over here so I look in my right door mirror just in case I've got to swerve. So I'm following, the, following this road ahead. I'm keeping an eye on my speed because it's quite easy to go over the speed limit on this road. Everybody is going faster than I am. Uh, why? Because they're, they're oblivious to the speed limit or oh, you know they can do if they want. Nothing to do with me. Now today I'm driving an automatic car. I will be doing some videos in a manual car so you understand the gear range I'm in the gear speed and the general sort of noise of the vehicle and what gear I use for where. So I'm following the road down, I'm looking in my mirrors as I'm going down and I can see that it's reasonably safe. My speed is reason reasonably constant and I can see traffic accumulating at the end of the road. Forgive me, there's nothing I, I can do with this camera on the inside. I'm sure you get an idea of what I'm trying to do. So as I'm going to the bottom of this road, I'm going to turn left where that red car is turning from. Now this is a very um, busy roundabout. It's something that you need to be aware of. When you're giving way to your right, if you can see the keep left bollard, there's a road on the right there that comes onto the roundabout. You need to watch out for that because it's a sneaky road. It's something people don't see. It's where this taxi's coming out from, the silver one. So as I've got to the end of the road here, I'm gonna go behind the Range Rover. I'm looking, there's nothing in both these lanes. And there's a red car coming across. And he's going into the second lane, I'm in the left lane. So what I'm doing now, I'm looking at my sat nav. My sat nav's saying to me, uh, I'm gonna follow the road ahead. So generally speaking, I try and keep my car in the left lane unless I'm going to turn right at some point soon, which I'm not, so I'm positioned correctly, so I'm keeping left at all times. It's something that your instructor should have taught you. So you always try and keep left as much as you possibly can. Now when my lights have gone green, theirs have gone red, but I'm looking for an ambulance. Now the speed limit has changed. I'm checking my mirrors to make sure it's safe. And I can see these people waiting at the crossing, possibly could go red. So I'm traveling at a speed that can stop if I need to. I'm gently gonna increase my speed to keep pace with everyone else, but I'm not gonna go over the speed limit. So I'm conscious of my speed. I'm doing 38 miles an hour at the moment. Now there used to be a cycle lane on the left here. It's now gone. Now it's the green bit there. So that's the, the cycle lane now. I'm keeping a safe distance from the car in front. 
and you should avoid parking in this green bit. If the light goes red, you, you avoid it. It's only in except, exceptional circumstances. The reason why it's green, it's, it's clearly identifiable. So you can see that it's for cycles. So I'm glancing at my sat-nav and I'm still gonna follow the road ahead.